Nunaresk, um, and a different rendition of the same thing. Um, more long exposures to see how, how this technique works with um, longer exposure. So this is the work of uh, Simon Gretchen, who is a sculptor, uh, and he's got a private, uh, uh, basically a private park, sculpture park, um, called Sculpture by the Lake. Same place. Um, but the kind of clouds, I think, um, and the detail that you see in the foreground, um, and the shadows, um, I find that interesting. Uh, Encom House, so this is uh, this estate, this is a privately owned estate, all of it, so whatever you see, the hills, the cliffs, the lake, um, same place again. So like I said, uh, things move, so in, in this context, you've got um, leaves that are very close up in the foreground, and they move quite a bit in the wind, um, so how do you get around that? Um, one way of thinking about it is actually um, making sure that there's enough contrast difference between the foreground elements and the middle and background elements uh, that when you blend them together, um, they, will, they will be separate sections and there won't be much overlap in between. Uh, there's another way which I'll come to later. Uh, this isn't actually tone mapped. Uh, this is blended together using masking in Photoshop. So I've, I've still taken multiple pictures, but I've actually manually created masks for different sections of the image. Um, and what HDR and tone mapping are brilliant at doing is actually uh, exaggerating the texture details because of the local contrast uh, push that uh, you get. Uh, this is Sandbanks, Cambridge. Uh, this is all Dorset Park, except for this. So this is uh, Warwick Castle. And this is about 17 exposures, 17 camera raw exposures, so that there's a lot of detail there, um, which unfortunately doesn't come across on screen. When you look at the print, mm -hmm. you can see a lot more detail. Um, this is up in Scotland, um, a place called Glencoe. Um, and this is the second largest salt mine in the world in Pakistan, where I come from originally. Um, and the, the lights, I don't know why they have these colored, multicolored lights, but they're actually there. Um, Corf Castle, so Corf Castle um, is known as the most romantic ruins in England, in Britain. Um, and there's a long story behind it, but I didn't know the story when I took the picture. Sorry, go ahead. Corf Castle, C-O-R-F-E. So I, I grew up in the 80s in Pakistan, right? So um, in Karachi, right? So if you think about it, it's the southern most city um, in the country. And during the 80s, we had the Kashmir conflict going on with India in the east. On the west, we had the Iran-Iraq war, right? Um, up in the north, we had the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And to the south was the sea, and I, I can't swim. Um, <laughs> so for me, um, as for everybody else, it was all very doom and gloom kind of atmosphere, right? Everybody would be thinking, you know, we just want an end to this. We just need peace, right? Um, so for me, this, this, this kind of represents peace. It's in ruins. But whatever happened has happened already, right? And now there is peace. It doesn't matter who won, who lost, you don't care. But for you know the normal person living, going about their lives, um, so you will see a lot of images of Corf Castle. So that's that's all Corf. This is not a HDR image. So this is a single image which I've treated in a way that it gives you that same effect. Um, so the contrast was. Um, wasn't wide enough. There, there, there's some highlights that haven't been recorded in the foliage there. Uh, they're oversaturated. But on the whole, uh, what I did was I basically flattened the image out by reducing the contrast, and then I increased the local contrast between the edges. Uh, so more of a David Hockney look I tried there. Uh, this is the castle up in Scotland as well, uh, Eileen Donan. 
But you can see in, in the cloud there, you can start to see some banding issues um, because it's been pushed so far. And in the hills in the background, you can see a little bit of flattening of cut, which I actually like in a sense. Um, more Scotland. Um, you can actually see some chromatic aberrations, which I took out in the next version, so I did it for the image. But you can see these kind of um, chromatic aberrations in the water. Um, Eileen Dolan again. Uh, sulfury clay, so this is um, <coughs> near Stonehenge, just off of the Stonehenge, there is the picture, uh, just down the road uh, from me. This is Weymouth, looking from Portland, Isle of Portland, Isle of Skye. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandbanks, uh, this is like the third most expensive real estate in the world. It's a very, uh, uh, it's a piece of land that's in the middle of basically, you see on both sides, and a strip of land in the middle. Um, this is the tomb of the emperor, the Mughal emperor Jahangir. Um, Bambra Castle in um, Northumberland. Uh, now this is actually a panorama, and I'll come to panoramas in a second. Here's North Castle, right. Uh, Tim Turner Abbey, and Turner's done some stuff with that. He's painted uh, some interesting pictures. So um, this again is a panorama. So not only is it multiple brackets, but it's also multiple files. So you're taking a section of picture of um, one part of the scene, you're cutting the camera across, and you're taking another set of images. So it's like this, it's made up of all of these images. So first you blend the images together, and once they're all blended, you actually start stitching them. Uh, so similarly, a uh, very difficult image, uh, Lullworth Cove. Um, You've got so many moving elements, the sky, the clouds, the sea, the people. There's actually a four-armed boy right here. So if you look at his arms, kids can't be still can they? Um, so yeah, again, uh, this is just um, showing three brackets and then uh, stitched together to create the larger panoramic image. Uh, Encom House again. Um, so artists do peace still, relatively. Um, and yeah, this again, the salt mine, um, pool of water, but it's underground, it's very still. No ripples there. Um, I was up on one of these minarets that you see. Um, this is a, again a mobile uh, mosque in Lahore, in the inner city. Um, this is a temple um, in, uh, near Lahore as well, in the salt range. Then we can hustle up in Scotland. Um, now this is the last image that I've done, the final image uh, that I've done for um, my PhD. And not only is it a panorama and HDR, but it's also focus site. So one section of the images only have this foreground foliage in focus. Um, and the other set has the background in focus. And that's a close-up of background detail. So those houses that you see at the back, this is basically a 10 feet wide print with some incredible detail. So in conclusion, um, what I'm trying to do is uh, new tools, um, same look, which I wouldn't have possibly achieved. I'm not a painter. Uh, my education, formal education, has been in computer science. I wanted it to be arts, but you know, um, too real to be acceptable. So the, again, there's this issue and a lot of debate about the HDR look, where it sits. Um, a lot of landscape purists don't like it because um, it doesn't quite conform to the kind of straight photography look that Ansel Adams had. Um, and in terms of how art makes things happen, I think. Um, HDR photography came as a response to art, to the, the will to create these kinds of images. Um, but then once the technology is there, you're actually rewarding it and using it and kind of exploring it further, in which case the technology itself um, 
in Brian New York. Um, so uh, I believe James Cameron said he waited about eight to ten years uh, before he could realize his vision for Avatar uh, because he had the vision but the technology wasn't quite there yet. Um, those are the references. And that's me if you want to follow me on social media. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Sam. See ya. I mean.